foot rod here. Common name. There's a lot of different terms you will see. Interdigital. Interdigital means between the two claws, okay? Right in between here and that little nice soft uh, tissue. Phlegmon dermatitis, necrobacillosis, pododermatitis. Hey, if you're in vet school, you got to know all those, okay? And know how they're interchangeable and where the origin came from. For us dealing with cattle, it's foot rot. Um, the interesting thing, I also get foul in the foot or rot foot. And most of those calls, and I don't know why, but they come more north and east. I don't, normally it's just foot rot term down. Do you guys ever hear these other terms or just foot rot? Yeah, that's kind of my, it's just interesting. All right, generally caused by a bacteria, uh, Fusobacterium necroforum and Bacteroides melanogenicus. Um, they've tried to change the name on these, of course, like they generally do. Again, we talked about the eye lesions or blemishes leading to pink eye, something stress the normal immune response and we end up with the disease. Generally, there's something that will cause, predispose these animals to this. Example, rain showers and all, heavy rainfall, muddy conditions. You also see it when animals have to walk on very um, coarse type materials, rocks, stubble generally, brush and thorns. Clinical signs, they're going to be lame or they're going to be favoring one leg. Generally, it's one out of the four. It could be multiple legs, though. Uh, generally, the lameness, the, the common term we use is a cripple, at least in the feedlot, means lameness. Generally, it will progress. In other words, it'll be kind of mild or subtle. Most of the time, cattle out on a range or pasture setting, the early clinical signs go unnoticed because they're generally in grass or they're walking down to the pond to get a drink of water and people just don't notice the real subtle changes in the lameness. If you're in more of a dry lot situation or mud lot here this year, which is unusual except the last three weeks, and where someone is checking the cattle like a pin rider or a pin walker like myself in a feed lot, you're going to start noticing those subtleties a whole lot earlier on. Generally, the swelling is going to be symmetrical, meaning it's equal on both sides, asymmetrical. It will favor the inside versus the outside or the right versus the left, however you want to look at it. The swelling generally where the hoof wall attaches to the, um, the skin, it's called the coronary band and swelling right in between this interdigital space. Um, when examined closely, in other words, you've got to get that foot and look at it. When you get that foot up, you open those claws up, in other words, just spread them apart, clean that area up, it will have a very, very foul smell, hence foul in the foot is one of the common terms for this. Um, has anybody had a cow that didn't clean in July for a few days? All right, none of you have, but if you have, it has a very offensive smell to it. It is not pleasant. That's what the smell smells like on a true foot rock case. And it will progress. The one thing that's very, very challenging with this disease is that on the inside, just can everybody kind of see I'm pretending these are two claws? And where this is going to occur, interdigital, right between the two claws uh, on that animal. On the inside part, where this hoof wall attaches, that coronary band and the skin on the inside, it's a very, very short distance to the joint space or the equivalent to our knuckle. And if the infection and the rod or the damaged tissue and infection extends inside there, it can get in that joint causing a septic arthritis. In other words, an infected joint. And those um, are extremely difficult to treat if you're trying to save the claw, such as a replacement heifer or a bull. And sometimes we have to actually remove the claw. That is one of the treatments for that uh, severe infection. And if that occurs, generally it will shorten the life expectancy if it's a reproductive animal. If I've got a feedlot, I can generally get that animal up to market weight and they, they will do fine. Okay, here's just an example right here's a good on the, the bottom in the, the, the nice soft skin, smooth skin should extend all the way back. The infection breaks down that layer of skin in between the claws and it gets down into that real sensitive tissue right in there. 
Okay. Tree. A lot of times, typically, the telephone calls that come in, and my experience going out to look at cases, you know, a little bit lame, I noticed, and I've actually got a grading scale myself that's kind of a, a adapted from uh, the equine side or horse side. There's also one in, in cattle, and I've just adapted it very, very simply for my cowboy crews to use, and it works great. But basically, it's a progressive thing. So one is very, very mild, very subtle, inconsistent, and five would be like a broken bone lame or cripple. That's how I use my scale. And generally, it's, you know, I noticed this calf was limping a little bit. It was consistent. Gave him a shot of, say, antibiotics. You know, gentleman up there would use LA 300, whatever. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, it might have gotten better for a couple of days, but then it didn't seem to change. I watched it for a week, and now all of a sudden it's getting worse. It's like barely toe touching. So a progressive type of a situation. Rarely, if it's a true foot rot, one dose, when it gets to the point it's consistent, is going to treat that animal. You've got to get in, and it's called debriding. In other words, you've got to clean out that infected material so that the healthy tissue remains and then treat the animal. Sometimes may even require a bandage. It's called a figure eight bandage to get that animal to be able to respond. Antimicrobials, we've already talked about that. There is a little bit of evidence of adding some iodide. Um, EDDI, there's a salt mix and there, there's a powder that you can mix in with a little bit of feed. Uh, make sure you stay pretty close to the dose that is prescribed and that's one of the doses that's uh, available there. I just wanted to throw this up here. I'm really good on my time here. This actually is our research feedlot. There's nothing wrong with that steer there. I just titled it Trusting Relationships. This was last year. We were going into a meeting that I knew was going to be an a interesting discussion. And I took that picture the morning before the meeting. That calf was very happy to see me. And I've got other pictures of this, but all the other cattle around wondered what was going on, and they came up to talk to me. So I do love cattle. Be happy. We've got about five minutes, which is where we should be about. Be happy to answer any questions or anything else that we might have picture out in Colorado is it the the foot rot okay the question was the organism that causes foot rot is it the same organism that causes lump jaw and classic foot rot classic lump jaw no they are totally different type of, of organisms mm -hmm. yes sir sorry The, the, I have never, I've never put Clorox, which is sodium hypochlorite, that's the active ingredient in Clorox. Um, I do know what sodium hypochlorite does to tissue. Have you ever spilt Clorox on you and left it? Burns, right? So I, I don't, I've not heard that. I have heard Clorox diluted out on different things and everything. At least in all the veterinary literature that I have gone through and read, I've never come across Clorox tr foot rot treatment. So uh, that was an elegant answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just, just <say> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to be nice here. All right. Thank I you. Want to thank Dr.